Hello again, everyone. This is Randy, your sewing machine man, and what we're looking at today is the machine. Uh, people ask me, uh, they get real specific. If you were running out of your house and it was on fire, what was the one machine you would grab? Or if you're going to the zombie apocalypse, or it's the end of the world as we know it, or the stuff has hit the fan, what machine would you want to have? And that's a real hard one because you have to decide, well... Do you want a zigzag? Do you want a straight stitch? Do you want a free arm? So it comes down to one machine. Well, I'm probably looking at it for me at least, based on my experience. Uh, it would be a slantomatic of one form or another, purely based on the fact that it is a flatbed. I could put it into a cabin if I had to. If uh, electricity wasn't available, I could rig it to run in a treadle. Uh, it would be uh, an engineering feat, but it could be done. And uh, you can slide the motor out. And what makes this so good is that it's standard. All the replaceable parts are available. It has probably the highest percentage of metal componentry of all the machines I work on. There's no electronics, of course, because there wasn't any such thing in 1958 when it was made. Everything was made in a machine shop by a machinist. All the gears are precision ground. There's only one part in here uh, because I know there's folks out there that know a lot about sewing machines and they will call me on this instantly what about the fiber gear that goes over in the hand wheel? There's a uh, metal uh, shock absorber over there that goes in this hole and goes in the main drive to, uh, you know, kind of soften up the start and stop so it's nice and quiet. Well, these fiber gears are not made of metal. I have a drawer with about 20 of these in it, and over the last 48 years, I have replaced probably two, and uh, they don't break as a result of the machine breaking them, they usually uh, break as a result of the customer forcing the hand wheel to go through something that the machine wasn't designed to sew. And that happens a lot of the newer machines today. A lot of the newer machines today probably would be fine if the customer wouldn't get carried away and try to force the needle through. So when you're sewing on something and the needle decides it wants to sew, 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 and then hit that seam when you're doing the rolled up cuff on the denim and hits that it stops and you're like well i'll see about that so you take it and you force it well you're not going to break this machine doing that because that hand wheel will take more than that but on the newer machines they will just instantly quite a few of them they'll just instantly break and then you have a problem and it was caused by the operator not the machine because all the machines today are made to a lot lighter standard than this this has got an alloy frame steel gears and direct gear drive motor and if something happened to this down the road, you know, if, if electricity went out and I'm running this with my generator and I have to worry about a clean sine wave, I just plug it in and go. I can run it off my solar. I have solar in my truck and I run these off the solar and uh, they don't use a lot. You can run them all day with a little bit of solar and uh, they don't eat up a lot of battery power on my uh, battery uh, ports, my uh, Goal Zero Yetis, they don't use up uh, a lot of those. Uh, you know, I can start out at 100 and I can sew on this thing all day long and still probably be at 97, 98. They don't use a lot of power. They're very efficient. So they have big motor brushes. They run cool. Uh, they're easy to service. Uh, they have the standard drop-in bobbin that's easy to get. It's been around forever. You can get them today even. That, that's still state-of-the-art. Everything down here is state-of-the-art. So uh, I have thousands of bobbins for this thing. Bob and winder ring is inside. It takes a standard bob and winder ring, nothing odd ball, and has the built-in stitches. That's why I would probably take this one. It has the built-in, most important, the three-step zigzag. It goes three steps to the right. Oh, oh, that was to the left. Three steps to the left, three steps to the right, and it has the elastic stretch and the uh, stitch that uh, made different manufacturers famous, the three-step zigzag. You can use it as a stretch or a reinforced zigzag. If you want a straight stitch and you don't care about all that stuff, just go get you an old black Singer 66 class or a 1591 perhaps. And then you got that taken care of. It may already be in a treadle base if you want to get real primitive with it. And you can do the treadle thing. I have a lot of customers that do that and they're quite happy with those. But if you want to step it up one notch, you want to go to something that uh, will do, well, all this wonderful stuff I've done here and all these stitches up here are built in. It has so many built in stitches, it's unbelievable. But if you want to get a machine that you cannot worry about, this is the 500A. They call it the Rocketeer, called the Slantomatic. It's a very smooth machine. It is very powerful. It is very, uh, well, it does a whole lot of things you'd want a machine to do and does it well. So I would recommend Singer 
500A Rocketeer, you can go with the 401, the 404, the 403, the different 500 series. But if it's like this, uh, you're going to have uh, probably a good solid machine that you're not going to worry about in your lifetime. This one here is made in 1958. So that's already uh, gone through someone's lifetime and getting ready to work on somebody else's lifetime. So they're a lifetime machine. That's uh, just the numbers bear that out. So if you're looking for one, uh, fine. Uh, this is what I recommend uh, by telling you this is the one I would uh, walk out the door with. If I could take one machine with me and put it in my truck and drive to my safe spot, this would be it. The Singer. 500A or 401A, but I got the 500A here ready to go. They're basically identical, but either one is good. I have the 500A, and uh, that's uh, that's the one I'd, I'd choose. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye now.